All right, play after me, starting on the note A. how the bow goes like it feels like a swing so it's not straight this would be straight but this is swung you gotta be real light real light small motion feel it make it feel good Now listen, check this out. So just I'm gonna randomly play other notes. Try something like that. So you keep the bow moving, and you're starting just on that F sharp, but then you play some other notes with it. So play after me, I'll, I'll give you some examples. Check this out. tricky.
one. Okay, we're gonna do the scale now, coming down from B. scale pentatonic scale fun fun workout it's a different scale than we're used to learning because we usually learn the major scale but uh it's not necessarily harder it's just unfamiliar right <clears throat> so uh sometimes we we confuse something saying it's hard when it's actually just unfamiliar there's nothing necessarily harder about playing the pentatonic scale than playing the major scale or the minor scales that you've play in Vivaldi or whatever else it's just you're not used to it but probably you're used to listening to the pentatonic scale and a lot of pop music um and uh and a lot of different types of music but probably you haven't taken time and put it on the instrument so it's not hard to do it's just you haven't spent the time on it and uh but this is the advanced class so that's why I like to make it challenging for you right and if it's too easy for you just take it up the octave or play it in second position, all right? If something's too easy for it, or play it with one finger. I always do that if I'm in orchestra class and I was bored, uh, I would play with one finger. Or, you know, like, let's do something, uh, this is fun, like, uh, let's do, okay, let's take a song that everybody knows here. Uh, okay, we're going to do Twinkle, but we're going to make it hard. So this is why we make it hard. We play twinkle in all positions. Watch, I'm going to do it in second position. So how do I do it in second position? We're doing it in D too, solidarity with the cellos. So, um... Second position. Third position. Fourth position. Let's do that. Let's play twinkle in second position. All right, so for violins and violas, you're gonna start on third finger. For cellos, it's whatever it means to you. <laughs> so you can start on second uh, second finger cellos. You're gonna play D on your second finger on your G string, right? And we're gonna play twinkle. Da -ga, da -ga, da -ga, da right there, ready, go. <laughs> That's twinkle in second position. Now we're going to twinkle in third position. So if you're on the cello, you're going to start on D on your first finger. Violins, we start on second finger. Ready, go. Fourth position. Violins start on first finger. Uh, cello... You can play it, uh, you play way up on your C string. So find a D on the C string, cello. Yeah, start there on, on whatever, some finger. Ready, go. <laughs> Ready, go. 
great. So let's do it now. Let's do it. Um, we're going to play a sixth below, a sixth below. So everything's going to be sixths. So it would be like this. So we're only playing notes. If you're asking, is it a major sixth or a minor sixth? It depends what key you're in. So what key are we in? We're in the key of D major. So that means there's two sharps. So A, B, C, D, E, F, G, when F and C are sharp. And that's how you know whether to play a major or a minor six, because you're not going to play any C naturals or F naturals. Only F sharp, C sharp. Okay? So we're playing a sixth below. We're playing double stops on twinkle. We'll do it slow. Da, 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 da. Here we go. And... So you can also do it not just with six, but you could do it with thirds, although that's harder for cellos. But you do thirds, fourths, sevenths, and seconds. So this would be thirds. For the violins, let's do thirds. Cellos, you can try it, but it'll be like this. That's thirds. We're going to do it slow. Three and four and... same thing with fourths you can do the same thing with seconds and you can do the same thing with octaves or you could do it with tenths which I need to practice so that's how it works I don't do it with fifths because fifths is really easy you know, anybody can play a fifth. You like seconds. Yeah, seconds are cool, right? Although unisons are fun, too. Let's do unisons. All right, so unisons is where you have your first finger here, and you have your fourth finger there, too. All right, we'll do it together. Unisons. One and ready, go. fun right yeah i mean that's so sorry i got a little bit digressing there but my point was if every if there's ever a time when something feels too easy to you in this class or any class you can always do any of those things you play in different positions you can improvise your bow you can play it up the octave you can harmonize in thirds fourths six sevenths and seconds octaves tenths and unisons yeah so like if you take like you know If you take meditation from Thais and you play it in unison, that's pretty ridiculous, right? So there's always a way to challenge yourself. All right. Um, is my bow hair blue? My bow hair is just normal color. But I do see how you're saying that because there's like a weird light on my... I have like a weird light, don't I? It may just be that my blue eyes are just, you know, they're just so powerful that they just rub off on everything and make everything else look... Uh, blue. I don't know. I'm rid ridiculous. Uh, let's see here. We were there. We were there. We were doing that. Uh, let's do a little more with that. 
um, this whole exercise where we're using a pentatonic scale. And it doesn't have to be a pentatonic scale, right? I mean, you could play over this, you could play D major. happens when you use that D major scale is the note G and the note C sharp are added into the scale and those can be notes that kind of rub a little bit sometimes like which is cool by me like I don't mind but um that's why a lot of times people use the pentatonic scale because it's a it feels a little bit safer to to use kind of any note from the scale right so um, I want to give you some more things, but but if you want, you can just play in the key of D major. So um, I want to give you some ways, now that we've worked on the scale a little bit, I want to get you to some ways to play improvising over this groove, but where you're putting structures on yourself. Like I'm going to show you one. Okay, I'm going to do five note phrases. So the structure I'm giving myself is only five notes per phrase, right? So I could do... That's a five note phrase, but so is this. Five note phrase, right? Five note phrase. Five note phrase, right? Each five note I phrase I played had a different rhythm though. Or maybe it started in a different place in the bar. You try that. Five note phrases. Two. Ready. You got it. Make each five note phrase different. Maybe one goes down, one goes up. Maybe they're fast, maybe they're slow. Three note phrases, play three note phrases. Only three notes in each phrase, then you gotta stop. Let's do a one note phrase followed by a, a six, uh, no, one note followed by four. So I'll show you what I mean. So I do, I do a one note phrase. Four note. Now here's another one note. Another four note. So as you notice, the one note, the one note phrase, each one I did was different. The first one I started on, on the downbeat. The next one note phrase I played, it started on beat two and it was long. That's, you get that? <laughs> you want me to give you more examples or you got it? So you're going to play one note phrase and then you're going to play a four note phrase. And then you can do that whole thing over again, but make it different. Ready, go. Hey, 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 Suzuki class. Hey, hey. a downward phrase and an upward phrase. Downward and then an upward. So now play, so now let's do a slow phrase, slow phrase, <laughs> right? So that could be like, Body. Oh. That's a slow phrase, right? Play slow phrases. More slow phrases. phrase 
So, so part of the reason that it's cool to do this is because if somebody hears me play like a line, like let's say I play some lines. Then they'll be like, oh, that's what that is. No, that's not what that is. That's just what I played, right? So it's like, it's easy to confuse like what is musical versus what is right or wrong. Like the thing I played there might have been musical, but it doesn't mean you have to copy everything about that and that that's the only way to play over this groove. You can play slow over this groove. You can play dense. You can play fast. You can play sparse. You can play up. You can play down. You can play. You see what I mean? So I'm trying to give you the sense of that full range of possibilities you have so that you can find something musical and not feel that it's about learning like this lick or that lick. Even if we are using the scale, there's still so many things we can do with that scale. So um, let's go back to this bowing thing, though, because we're going to make it a little more deep today. So remember this, what we were doing with the ghosting like this. So you cover the strings and then we can do like eight on mute for eight. Let's get that down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up, keeping the bow moving. trade we're gonna do something called trading trading is where you play an idea then i play an idea then you play an idea then i play an idea then you play an idea then i play an idea so you don't have to copy me in fact i'm gonna make you go first and then i'm gonna respond to your idea what part of the beauty of trading is is that that you don't have to sound like somebody else you get to do your thing so like i might play something fast and you're like oh yeah well i got something slow and that's even cooler you know or whatever <laughs> You know, it's like, it's like the, it's like the dialogue, you know, it's like the, it's like the juxtaposition that is hip. That's what makes it cool. So, um, so you're going to play an idea and then I'm going to play and then you're going to play them. It's called trading. Sometimes people call it trading fours. 
So that's like trading four bars or four measures. We could be trading eights or trading 16s. So we'll see where it goes, all right? So you start. One, two, what you got? Uh. Good times, good times. Advanced class, my people. 